Hi, I'm Jason Patrick, an electrical power engineer with Electrotechnic. In this video, I'm going to talk about the fundamentals of protection coordination studies, the relevant electrical standards, and how to perform protection coordination calculations using software. First of all, what is protection coordination? The objective of coordination is to use protective devices to minimize the damage and isolate a problem in an electrical system. A, therefore, a coordination study must be performed to properly coordinate all protective devices. What is the role of protective devices in a coordinated system? A protective device should reduce exposure and isolate the problem. It should limit the outage to only the problem area and it should operate quickly to limit the damage. Here is a schematic of an electrical system. In this example, I will focus on the selection of circuit breakers C1 and C2, and I will look at their discrimination for a fault on C2. The maximum normal operating current for C1 protected feeder is 694 amps and for C2 it's 239 amps. The maximum prospective fault current level for C2 is 7.2 kA. There are several electrical standards which include requirements for protection coordination. The standard ASNZS3000 is quite prescriptive and it provides some guidance but only up to 800 amps. The table from the standard is shown here in the slide. The British standard BS7671 and the IEC standard contain more of only a guidance on how to achieve circuit breaker selectivity. We created an article which summarises all the standards requirements for protection coordination and the link is provided below in the video description. For our example, the rating of the downstream breaker C2 will be less than 250 amps. From the table, the requirements are as follows. Discrimination is required between overload curves and is recommended up to the instantaneous setting or short time pickup of C1, but need not apply above the arcing fault current. The arcing fault current is defined as 60% of the prospective fault current, which in our example is 4,320 amps. The table states to achieve compliance, discrimination is deemed to be achieved if the rating of C1 breaker is greater than or equal to 1.5 times the rating of C2. Now we will select the circuit breaker types and ratings. Both C1 and C2 will be MTCB type with ratings to match the load currents. Here we can see that C1 will be a Snyder electronic type with micrologic trip unit, rated up to 800 amps. And C, C2 will be an ABB thermal magnetic type, MCCB, rated up to 250 amps. Below are the device setting panels, which we can adjust to, to change the time current curves and the tripping characteristics of these devices. Next, I will show you how to perform the protection coordination study using software. This is Cable Pro Web Software. First thing I'm going to do is enter the project and I'm going to create a new calculation. I'm going to name the calculation C1 and C2 study. Calculation type is protection coordination. Firstly, I'll add the upstream breaker C1 which is a Snyder and the family is Compact NS. The model is NS800L. There we have it. There's the appropriate rating that we need. And the trip unit is a Micrologic 5.0. We can see now that the time current curve for that device C1 is shown here and the settings are over to the right. 
Now I'm going to add the downstream breaker C2. So that's an ABB thermal magnetic MCCB. The model is XTS, XT3S. The rating that we need is 250 amps. The trip unit is selected. Now we can see the time current curves for both devices and we can switch between them and they're highlighted in this plot and the settings are shown over to the right for both devices. We can see from the plots that there is significant overlap. To achieve coordination, enough separation must exist and must be maintained between the time current curves. I'm going to use the coordination criteria tools to help us. We had a requirement of a factor of 1.5 from the table in the standard and I'm going to show this as an imaginary curve on the plot. So for device 2 I'm going to add a current multiplier of 1.5 and you'll see that there's now an imaginary blue line shown on the plots and basically to achieve coordination we need to move the curve of the upstream device shown in red to the right hand side of this imaginary curve and we do that by changing the settings. So I'm going to adjust the settings and I'm going to start with long time protection and I'm going to adjust that to just above what we needed um, and that setting is 720 amps. Next I'm going to adjust the time delay and see if that helps us. You can see the red curve moving to where we need it to. Finally I'm going to adjust the short time protection and the pickup current And we can see that these changes have helped us to achieve discrimination. And we can check by zooming in on the plots. We can also look at the tripping sequence of operation for the arcing fault level of 4320 amps. So I'll enter that value here. And you can see that the tripping time for that arcing fault current for device 2, which is the downstream breaker C2, is under 0 0.02 seconds. And the tripping time for device, uh, device 1, which is C1, is around 9.5 seconds. So you can clearly tell that these breakers are discriminated. And that curve is shown here as a vertical line. Finally, we can print a detailed report. I'll just open this PDF. The PDF contains uh, obviously the time current curves and the single line diagram. You've got the coordination criteria and the sequence of, of operation, as well as all the details of our devices, manufacturer, family, models, part numbers, and importantly, you've got the settings. And there we have it. It's quite simple to perform a protection coordination study using, uh, using the software. Uh, you can get a free trial of this software by visiting our website elek.com.au. Thank you so much for watching.